going to determine my destiny or who I am. And that's what so many of us have done. We're letting the devil tell us who we are. When God says you are the righteousness of Christ Jesus, you are the head and not the tail, that you have a breaker anointing upon you, that you can speak to those dead, dry bones and prophesy resurrection life. That's the people who we are. Some of the things that the, uh, the Lord spoke to me uh, about, he said to me, one day we were in prayer, and he said, Everybody was getting the word, and the Lord said to me, and he gave me the word slothful. And he said, many of my people are battling with slothfulness. And so I thought, what in the world is slothfulness? So I started to look it up, and the Lord started to speak to me about it. This slothful spirit is what causes you to be very indifferent. It causes you to be passive. It causes you to be asleep. It's, you're dull. It, it, you're you're one of the definitions uh, was stupid and uh, a hidden sense. You're not awake. And so uh, in the scriptures, in Matthew 25, 1 through 13, it says here, The kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were uh, wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, no light of God, no anointing. You're not listening to the voice of the Lord. There's no revelation coming. But the wise took the oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom delayed, they slumbered and slept. And that word slept there means to be a sloth, to be indifferent. And at midnight a cry was heard, and the, br and the bridegroom is coming, and he said, go out to meet them. Those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. And the door was shut. And it says, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Arise, watch, arise from death. That slothful spirit causes us to be in that slumbered state. And I said, well, Lord, explain to me a little more what you mean by that. And he says, well, many of, many of us who have been saved a long time now have gone through stuff where you've had disappointments, where you've had um, sickness or illness or infirmity or affliction or hope deferred, a lot of hope deferred. And the Lord said it's almost like a thin layer of garment or something that's been placed on you that's caused you to, to, to bow over and to step back. Now you believe, you go to church, you're there all the time, but you're not really passionate. The zeal of the Lord has not consumed you any longer. You go through the motions. You know, the Bible says in Revelations, I'd rather you be hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, what? I'll spit you out of my mouth. And, and, and let me tell you, I have been there. We've been pastoring a long time, you know. Sheep bites. <laughs> and there's, there's stuff that happens, family issues that happens. And I thought, Lord, you've got to be kidding me. And what had happened to me, that, that fire started to go out. And the Lord said that's a passive spirit. It works with slothfulness. And it causes the passivity to overtake the people. We're going to break that off today. Amen. Then, now listen to this. In, in Matthew 25, 24 through 30, it says, Then he who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man. You, know, you remember the story, I didn't type the whole thing out, where, where uh, they were all blessed with talents. 10, 5, and then 1. This is the one that didn't do anything with it. And he said, Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. And he said, Look there, you have what is yours. He hid it. He, that word even means to isolate. But the Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy, slothful, and the King James it says, you slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back with interest. So take that talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given. 
and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And that word wicked means to press and to be harassed, a disease or blind. And slothful there means to delay, to be backward, to be late, to loathe, to hesitate. A delayed reaction is disobedience to the Lord. And many times, because things haven't happened, there's a delay. And there's a hesitancy to step out. Chuck said, the Lord quoted the scripture, when I come back to this earth, will I find faith? So this enemy, the, the, the plan of the enemy is to cause us, to, we go through the motions, we're in church, but we need deliverance from slothfulness and a passive spirit because of hope deferred, because of situations that occurred in our life that is trying to take that fire out. The zeal of the Lord has consumed me. That's what the word says. The Lord, we need that passion. There's a scripture in 1 John uh, in the message version, 4 or 5, and it says that the conquering power that will bring the world to its knees is our faith. So therefore, if the enemy can get us in this passive state where we're not trusting the Lord, where we're not stepping out with zeal and knowing that God is going to cause me to be this overcomer. We are overcomers, but we need to walk in it. But it's a mind shift that has to take place. Are you hearing me? We have to shift. And, and it's, listen, that's that warring peace. It doesn't just happen. We have to take out our giants. We have to speak to that thing. We have to get a word of the Lord and say, I know this is the word. This is the revelation that God has given me. When I was pregnant for my, my second son, uh, the doctors, uh, I had complications with my first son, had a C-section. Second son, I wanted to go natural. And the doctor said, you can't. I thought, with God, nothing shall be called impossible. And I said, Lord, and I asked him. And he said, go for it. So the whole nine months, they, they were concerned that I was going to have an issue or rupture, blah, blah, blah. Came time to give birth. I went into labor, and they told me my son was dead. They said, he is dead, and we have to give you an emergency C-section. I said, my son is not dead. My son is going to live because God has promised me that when he gives seed, he's going to cause it to come forth. And then I told my husband to punch the guy in the face. So, well, you know, I, I, I know that wasn't right, but we have to get angry at the enemy, right? We have to get mad at the devil. We can't tell, let him take our stuff. Amen? We have to punch him in the face with the word of the Lord. And so my husband's like, Trisha, I can't punch him in the face. I said, punch him in the face. I said, because our baby is alive and he's not dead. So when it came time to give birth, it was like I, there was such warfare. And, I, you know, you're scared. You hear what the doctors are saying. But I said, no, the Lord told me. Now, let me tell you the strategy he gave me. I was pregnant, and for nine months, the Lord had me speak over my body, over every part of my body, and decree the word every day for nine months. See, what is that? There's a cycle. The Lord is telling us a strategy of the word. You've got to get the word back in you. You speak to that thing. You call that thing. And you say you will live and not die. You prophesy life to that thing. And so when I went, when I was in the labor room, the doctors were scrubbing to give me the section. And, of course, there was a movie Sybil out at that point. <laughs> It seemed like I had multiples, but I started pushing, and I'm talking and doing all this crazy stuff, and I started pushing, and I gave birth to my son. And for those of you who know, I had a, he had a 9.9 .9 APGAR score. The Lord says that with God, nothing shall be called impossible. There's that deliverance. My mind had to get delivered. I had to allow the spirit of the Lord. You have to understand something. I was operating in signs and wonders, but I was bound. My thought process was not awakened to the truth, the revelation of who I am. The devil's not going to determine my destiny or who I am. And that's what so many of us have done. We're letting the devil tell us who we are. When God says you are the righteousness of Christ Jesus, you are the head and not the tail, that you have a breaker anointing upon you, that you can speak to those dead, dry bones and prophesy resurrection life. That's the people who we are. 
We cannot be passive any longer. God is breaking us out of that passivity because of situations that have caused you to pull back. God's pulling that slumbering spirit off of us. He's pulling off that slumber. He's pulling that blanket off, that, that thing that is trying to lock you down. But I got news for you. God is unlocking. He is unlocking that, that, that um, hindrance that the enemy has put you on, that's placed upon you. 